In this lab, we need to configure an IPsec VPN between customer router 1 and customer router 2, but we are using dynamic IP addresses. So the IP addresses of customer router 1 and customer router 2 can change. Now in this example, I'm not gonna manually configure the tunnels. I'm gonna use the VPN config generator, which is software that I've written. Don't do the same things over and over again. Learn to optimize the way you work. Now I wrote the software because I got tired of configuring devices individually and manually and constantly making mistakes. The software allows you to create VPNs, both simple and complex, within a few seconds. So rather than me manually configuring the devices, I'm simply going to use this to make it easy for me. I've now started a subscription-based service where you can get access to all my courses for a monthly fee. And in addition, you'll be able to get access to the VPN config generator, as well as other software. I'm also working on some exciting developments. I don't want to say too much yet, but if you join my subscription service, you'll get access to some really exciting stuff in the near future. Currently, you'll have access to software and videos, and that includes all my courses and future courses that I create, but some exciting stuff is going to be happening soon, so I would suggest that you join the subscription-based service before the prices increase. Now, as I've said, this software was written a few years ago. It's only supported on Windows. But what it allows you to do is create many types of VPNs. So under Cisco Router, Router Site-to-Site -Site VPNs, I'm going to choose IPsec Tunnels and NAT dynamic IP addresses on both sides. Other options would be static IP addresses or static IP addresses on one side, dynamic IP addresses on other sides, and IPsec tunnels with duplicate LAN segments. But this is the topology that we're configuring. So in our topology, we've got customer1, davidbomble.com, and customer2.davidbomble.com. On the hub site, the Outside interface is gigabit 01. Inside interface is gigabit 00. And that's true on the other side. So gigabit 01, gigabit 00. So in our topology diagram, we can see that the interface names are correct for both outside and inside. We're using dynamic IP addresses on the outside. The networks that we're going to encrypt are 10, 1, 1, 0, slash 24 on the one side and 10, 1, 2, 0, slash 24 on the other side. And that's what we see in our topology diagram. So that's correct for this topology. We could change options such as ISA, KMP. We could change the pre-shared key. I'm not going to worry doing that. We could change the transform sets. We could add additional subnets to encrypt. We could change the name of the VPN map or the dynamic map. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click OK to generate the configuration. So this is the configuration for customer router 1. Here's the configuration for customer router 2. So we've got some access lists for interesting traffic as well as for NAT. We want to NAT traffic to the internet. So any traffic from our local segment going to the internet, but not traffic going to the remote network. We're going to overload gigabit 01 for NAT. We've got a route map specifying which traffic will not be NATed. That's based on this access list. We've got our crypto ISA KMP policy where we're specifying that we're using pre-shared keys for authentication, triple days for encryption, MD5 hashing. You may want to change that to SHA. 
We've got other settings in the ISA KMP policy. Notice we've got a pre-shared key configured for the remote router. We've got our transform sets. We've got a dynamic map configured, specifying which traffic will be encrypted. That's based on this access list. We've got a crypto map, and we've got the crypto map bound on the outside interface. We've also got NAT statements on the inside and outside interfaces. So what I'll do is simply copy this configuration and I'm gonna paste it into router one. So the configuration has been pasted into the router. I often have issues when running NAT on Cisco viral devices. You may have to increase the memory on your router in case the router crashes, but it works in this example. So I'll go to router two, copy the configuration. Here's router two. You may wanna save your config before pasting this configuration in, in case the router does crash. In this example, it looks okay. Interfaces have come up. So I've configured customer router one and customer router two let's see if they can ping from their internal interfaces to one another. So can customer router one ping customer router two, IP address 10.1.2.1 from a source of 10.1.1.1. And I'll do something similar on the other side. So can customer router two ping 10.1.1.1 source 10.1.2.1. There you go, the ping now succeeds. I found that you need to send traffic from both sides to get the VPN up. So show crypto, ISA KMP, Security Association. You can see that a security association is active. On this side, show crypto, ISA KMP SA. The security association is active. We can see the source and destination. So show crypto IPsec SA. We can see the number of packets encrypted and decrypted. So as an example, if I do the ping again, notice it's gone to 19 packets encrypted and decrypted. Do that again. It's gone to 24 packets encrypted and decrypted. On this side, show crypto IPsec Security Association, 24 packets encrypted and decrypted. Do the ping over here. Number of packets encrypted and decrypted has increased. So these two routers, router one and router two, can ping their internal IP addresses, even though routers on the internet don't know about network 10. ISP router two as an example, only knows about network eight. There are no network 10 entries in its routing table. So can the Ubuntu devices ping each other? ifconfig on Ubuntu one, it's got an IP address, route hyphen n, doesn't have a route. So what I'm gonna do is turn off this Ubuntu device and turn it on again. What I've found is that if you configure your DHCP pools in the way that I did with the interface being up before you configure the pool, the Ubuntu clients will request an IP address and receive an IP address before you've configured the DNS entry and default gateway. So I've simply rebooted them. In the real world, you could do a release and renew. They've both got default gateways they both got IP addresses. So can this device ping this device? So ping 10.1.2.12, yes it can. And if I look at customer router one, notice encrypted packets, that's going up based on the pings sent from one Ubuntu device to the other. So that works well. On this side, ping 10.1.2.12. 12. 
that's actually itself. So let's ping 101112. Notice encrypted packets, decrypted packets. Do that again. This is increasing, increasing again. So I'm happy with that. Can the devices ping cisco.com? Yes, they can. So both Ubuntu devices are able to ping cisco.com, but when we pinging cisco.com, notice the encrypted packets don't increase. This traffic is being natted onto the internet. It's not going through the IPsec VPN.